What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? That's right, you read the title. Time to buckle the fuck up and take your anxiety medication because it's time for another episode of Brandon Gets Forced to Do Another Political Video. Again. Now, I know that a lot of you guys like my political content, especially when it gets rather spicy, but I can understand why some of you don't. But especially with a topic like we're gonna be talking about today, I'm kind of boots on the ground on this one, so I think I can offer a unique perspective that can help keep you guys informed without it being skewed by the media. Because I'm a guy you can trust. Okay, I'm a guy you can trust more than the Washington Post trying to tell you that the AR-15 was no shit developed for Nazi infantrymen. So, uh, you know, when the bar is set that low, even a degenerate like me looks like Walter fucking Cronkite. Now, firstly, what I'm not gonna be focusing on, I'm not gonna be talking about the inevitable calls for gun control that are going to come as a response to this most recent tragic shooting that just happened down the road from me here in Texas. Nor am I gonna aid in giving the piece of shit who did it any more publicity than he's already gotten. Rest in piss, you won't be missed. What I am gonna tell you about is a huge gun control move that's happening right now, and for the most part, I don't think you guys have even heard it mentioned. It's a huge threat to the gun community that's going totally under the radar, and I think you guys deserve to know about it. What's different about this one is that this time, they're not coming for the gun owners directly. They're coming for the gun stores. So I'm gonna tell you what's happening, tell you why it's important, and then I'm gonna go over some things that I think are a good idea to address this going forward. Find out what the best course of action is and hopefully get a few people involved so maybe we can do something about it. But YouTube really doesn't have a good track record of monetizing videos like this, so real quick, let's help keep the lights on and help keep my editor paid by thanking our sponsor NordVPN real quick. So let's talk about VPNs, specifically why you should have one, even more specifically why you should have NordVPN. For one, it's a great way to stay secure online. It blocks intrusive ads, web trackers. Whenever you download a file, threat protection will scan it for malware. But it's not even just for security. NordVPN can give you access to content that's not available in your country. Do you wanna watch a show or play a game that's not available where you live? All you have to do is find a place on the map where it is available, click that place, and boom. Now you live there, congratulations. There's also no bandwidth throttling. Because NordVPN encrypts all of your traffic, your internet service provider can't slow down your streaming speed. And speaking of streaming speed, NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there and you can add it to up to six devices. And even better yet, you can get an exclusive deal if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Herrera. And it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Either go to the URL right here on the screen or go down to the description or the pinned comment and that is a two-year plan of NordVPN at a great discount plus an additional month for free. Watch what you want and be safe doing it. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring the video. Now back to the content. So what is this new gun control push? So in late June of last year, Biden announced his intent to go after rogue FFL dealers. The plan was to institute a zero tolerance policy against rogue FFLs, you know, FFL dealers who were willfully violating the law and selling to felons or falsifying 4473s. So in case some of you don't know, an FFL is a federal firearms license. It's the federal license that gun stores, pawn shops, manufacturers, people like that have to have in order to buy and sell guns as a business or manufacture guns as a business. So if you're an FFL in the US and you want to sell a gun to a private individual, despite what the mainstream media and Twitter says, you have to show your ID, pass a federal background check through the NICS system, and then fill out a form called A4473. All of this is just to make sure that you're legal, you're not a felon or a prohibited person, stuff like that. So Biden's plan was trying to target FFLs that were willingly breaking the law in order to sell to felons, prohibited persons, and you know falsifying 4473s. This seems like something that's hard to argue against on the surface, right? Shutting down FFLs that are knowingly bucking the law and providing guns without background checks, possibly even more nefarious things like, for example, knowingly trafficking guns to the cartel. No, oh, I forgot that was the ATF that got caught doing that. While Biden was vice president, I might add. Huh. Anyhow, for now, let's just completely ignore the fact that this would do absolutely nothing to stop the vast majority of mass shootings. Given the fact that most of these mass shooters have no felonies on their record and could easily pass any kind of background check. Kind of a big flaw to just ignore if you ask me, but yeah, whatever. What is important to note is that we do already have a system for this. If you're an FFL, you can get what's called an ATF audit. ATF, of course, referring to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, so this would kind of fall under their purview. Basically, your local ATF guy or gal will ask to meet with you at your place of business to check your logbooks, which every FFL is required to keep and maintain in order to do business. 
So this shows stuff like the serial number of guns, you know, where you got them from, where they went, if you transferred them out, and if you sold it to somebody, it links it to that 4473 that you had them fill out. And if this 4473 is starting to sound like a foot in the door to a gun registry, well, cue the Red Dawn clip. But that's a subject for another time. Also, if you're a fan of Red Dawn, or at least not a fan of gun control, you should go ahead and subscribe. It's free, why not do it? You can even like the video if you feel like helping out. So anyhow, the purpose of these audits is basically to make sure you're not operating as a loose cannon. Uh, you know, not doing background checks, slinging machine guns out the back of your gun store. And if you're on the up and up, they finish the audit, shake your hand, and then drive off into the sunset. Presumably to dry fire at the local no-kill shelter. Come on, I had to. Anyhow, are you following so far? Because here comes the motherfucker. Since Biden announced these changes about 11 months ago, FFL revocations are up. And not by a little bit. So right now, what's, what's the number you're thinking? You thinking about 20%, maybe 30%? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, try over 500%. Yeah, no, that's right. Over five times as many FFLs are being taken away by the government than before Biden took office. Before this change, the ATF revoked an average of about 40 FFLs every year. In the last 11 months, 273 and climbing. These are gun stores and other firearm related businesses that are being shut down by DC. Now here's another important part, and this is quoting an Ammo Land article recently. Quote, this has nothing to do with the ATF and everything to do with the DOJ, said John Clark of FFL Consultants. Clark is a firearm industry expert who said the ATF announced the number of revocations at a recent firearm industry conference. Quote, the vast majority of the ATF don't like this any more than the industry does, he said. It's Biden. So these orders are coming directly from the top. So why would Biden be going after the gun industry and small time FFLs like me? It's not like he said that's what he was gonna do or anything. And gun manufacturers, I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh yeah. Fuck. So Biden has now used the DOJ to weaponize the ATF against FFLs across the country. No longer just targeting criminals, but now going after small mom and pop FFLs who had small paperwork infractions or clerical errors. Things that used to be easily correctable or just a small slap on the wrist are now resulting in your license being revoked. So basically now if you do so much as sneeze without covering your mouth, the ATF is going to try to take away your business. Which I mean, why would you sneeze without covering your mouth? That's fucking disgusting, uh, but you get the point. Now quoting from the article again, if a dealer makes a simple mistake, they can now lose their license because the new definition of willful states that the dealer knew the law, but willfully chose to violate it anyway, regardless of whether it was an oversight, an error by an employee, or a simple paperwork mistake. Quote, they have twisted negligence into willful, Clark said. These are not uncommon errors that we're seeing, things happen. On top of that, I've been told that they've taken the ability from local ATF branches to make judgment calls. So all of this goes straight up to DC, the greatest hive of scum and villainy. So the local agents on the ground, who oftentimes are super chill and can tell whether or not somebody's being intentionally shady, now have to play second fiddle to faceless people in DC, who probably couldn't point to the city in question on a map. So now, I'll be perfectly honest, I was a little hesitant to make this video. Fuck, I'm still kind of hesitant to make this video because I am an FFL. I have a 0702 FFL with SOT. That's how I'm able to build guns, have my reference library, and do the custom work that we do. Because this is by far my main income source. Uh, the guns that we build and the videos that we do for you guys. So knowing that the DOJ, who does not like guys like us very much at all, uh, could try to target us next using this as a bullying tactic, even though we've never broken the law, is sad. It's really sad. I shouldn't have to be afraid for my livelihood to speak the truth. That some government entity is gonna use a loophole to attack me, not because I violated the law, but because they don't like me or they don't like my politics. And because they can. That being said, I thought it was important enough to bring up and that it was important for us to all stand together so we can try to do something to push back and to fight this. So now to solutions. What can we do about it? 
Now I can already hear people in the comments, especially from anti-gun countries. Now, Brandon, I don't really care about gun dealers. What's your plan to stop mass shootings? Well, it's not by attacking small businesses that follow the law, I'll tell you that much. Maybe instead of getting tunnel vision on the guns, we should be asking ourselves why there's an epidemic of young people that want to kill large groups of innocent people, including people they've never met. We could also, for example, look into the correlation of these disturbed individuals that come from broken and fatherless homes. Especially since, speaking purely psychologically, young men seem to develop their sense of empathy, primarily from their fathers during childhood. Maybe we should start asking ourselves about that. Nah, that sounds hard. Let's just fixate on the guns. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a talk for another time. As for this new push by the ATF, it seems like the course of action here is to stand behind these FFLs and push them to litigate, file lawsuits against this abuse of power. I know of more than one case right now that I'm not gonna get into the details of because I'm sure they don't wanna be kind of called out in a public forum, but I know multiple people that have faced or are facing this issue right now. And what DC is doing is banking on the fact that these people won't push back, that they don't have the money to litigate. After all, they're the big behemoth of government, and if they're bullying small businesses, they don't have the money or endurance to fight that legal fight. But the problem is if they don't fight it, then they're just gonna take their license and keep going after more and more small businesses. Does that sound fair to you? The government is literally abusing the legal system twice. They're altering definitions to cause a problem in the first place, and then they're banking on the fact that you can't afford to defend yourself in the court of law. So that's why I'd like to talk to people in the Firearm Policy Coalition, the Gun Owners of America, uh, National Association for Gun Rights. I'd like to talk to you guys about setting up a fund specifically to litigate against government forces like this that are coming after these local FFLs. Because if we don't hold the line now, they're gonna keep coming after more of us. As the saying goes, if you don't speak up when they come for somebody else, there's gonna be nobody left to speak up for you when they come for you. So not only am I making this video to let all of you guys know what's happening and what to pay attention to, but I'm also letting you know that I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is on this. I've donated to stuff like this in the past, not all that I've talked about just because it's certain things you just do because they're the right thing to do. But I feel particularly bad in this instance, not just because my livelihood's in danger, which it is, but also small businesses are being targeted and nobody is standing up for them. So yeah, I, I would love to partner with any of the three aforementioned groups or potentially all of them together about creating some legal resource fund for small businesses, small FFLs that are being targeted and actively tread on by the ATF and Biden's DOJ. And if I get swatted and killed in a no-knock, you guys will know why. That was meant to be a joke and I'm just very uncomfortable now. <laughs> Anyhow, hopefully this story will have a happy ending to it and maybe, may, just maybe, we can hold that line until midterms. And if those go the right way, then possibly things will change within the DOJ. I'm not holding my breath, but you know, I'm an optimist, occasionally. But anyhow, I hope I didn't bore you guys too much. Like I said, I take a break from the, the, the comedy stuff and, and the gun videos every now and again to let you guys know about things that I think are important. And this one definitely qualifies. So if you like this video or you want to see some of our other stuff, the Darwin Awards, Curse Gun Images, I think it's around about time to do some of those, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Also, be sure to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube has been unsubscribing people again, we've noticed. But more than anything, I'd like to just take a moment to thank you guys for just watching videos like this and supporting me and giving me the, the life that I've got. I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyhow, that's about all I've got for this video. I appreciate you staying to the end and as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon. Like us put in the top. But I can't let you get slow, get slow, get slow, get slow.